What's up y'all, I am Renzi, a freelance digital artist from the Netherlands and in today's video I want to show you an amazing technique that I've learned how to create a realistic glow that you can use to glow let's say about anything that you want. And last week when I was on a mini holidays in the Netherlands with my camper I decided to drive with my cousin to some beautiful forest in the center of the Netherlands. There were some awesome squirrels, there were some nice rabbits and I took some nice pictures of some mushrooms and today I want to show you how how to make these things glow. Now, if you love photo manipulation, if you love Affinity Photo, consider subscribing to my channel because I'll be releasing tips and tricks regarding photo manipulation and Affinity Photo. Now let's dive right into Affinity Photo and let me show you how we can make this amazing glow. Let's go. All right, so we've jumped into Affinity Photo and this is the mushroom and the photo that I want to make glow. So. The first step that we've got to do is I want to extract the mushroom from its background. So first we're going to extract, extract it as a whole and then I want to extract the top part of it separately. So let's start by extracting the mushroom as a whole. So how do we do this? I select my background layer. I press W on the keyboard to select my selection brush tool. You can also select it by clicking here in the, in the tools panel. And I will increase my brush size a little bit by using the right bracket key. And then I'm simply going to drag around my mushroom. Now, as you can see, of course, we can make a really fairly easy selection. And that is because the mushroom is pretty distinct from the background. So the mushroom is pretty bright and saturated. And the background is pretty dark, let's say. So let's zoom in a little bit to see if we made a nice selection. Maybe we can add this part a little bit. And... I think this looks pretty good. Now, what I used to do and what I am actually used to is to press Q on the keyboard to go into quick mask mode to quickly see if I made a good selection. So as you can see, I missed a little part right over here, which I usually wouldn't see. So this is my, let's say, check if I made a good selection. So use quick mask mode to see if you made the right selection. All right, now this looks pretty good to me. Let's add this. Yes, this looks pretty good to me. So I press Q again to leave quick mask mode. And now I'm going to press Command-0 to zoom out. And I'm going to press Command-J to duplicate this mushroom on its own layer. So now you can see that when I get rid of the background, you can see that we've got the mushroom uh, on its own layer. Now, as mentioned before, I also want to extract the top of the mushroom as well. So let me show the background once again and how I'm going to do this. It's pretty simple actually with the selection brush tool selected. All we have to do is hold alt. So I increase my brush size a little bit. I'm going to hold alt or option key and I'm simply going to brush over the bottom part of our mushroom. And as you can see, we got rid of the bottom part. So if I would press command J once again, you can see that now we've got, um, the top part on its own layer. So now we've got the top part, then we've got the middle part, or the whole mushroom, and then we've got the background as a whole. So this I'm gonna rename top, let's say. And this I'm gonna rename mushroom. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a group out of our top layer. So I'm gonna select my top layer mm -hmm. and I'm gonna press Command G to group it together. And this group I'm gonna call glow. Now let's open the group by hitting this little arrow icon. And now this is where the fun part starts and this is where we are gonna start to add the glow. All right, so the first thing that we've got to do is we want to make a duplicate once again of our top layer uh, by pressing Command J. So let's do that right now. So press Command J on the keyboard and we will make a duplicate. And I want to set the blend mode to add. So click on this uh, drop down menu right over here and scroll down a little bit until you find add. And as you can see, it already looks more like our mushroom starts to glow, but this is not the effect. This is just the beginning. So um, bear with me and it's gonna be awesome. All right, so the next step that I want to do is I want to add a subtle glow to um, this top layer. So how to do this, I'm going to use a Gaussian blur for this and I'm actually going to use the Gaussian blur live filter. So go down here in the layers panel, click on your live filters and select Gaussian blur. Now the first blur, I want to set it to five pixels. So I will simply 
um, click here in the box and I'm gonna press 5 and press enter so it will be set to 5 pixels and now you can see if I zoom in a little bit you can see the before so now it's perfectly sharp and with that Gaussian blur it looks something like this alright so now this layer is called top and I want to rename it so let's actually rename it 5px for the 5 pixels that we've used for this Gaussian blur all right, so the next step, we want to duplicate our new layer, so our 5px layer. So I'm gonna press Command J once again to duplicate it. I'm gonna go into my Gaussian blur and I'm gonna set the value to 100. So I'm gonna slide this thing all the way to the right and you can see that now it's, it seems like it's on its maximum and now it's set to 100 pixels. So you can see again, this is the before what it looked like and this is the after. So next thing, I want to rename this layer, so this time we're gonna rename it 100px. I'm gonna copy it once again, or duplicate I should say, so I press Command J once again. I dive into the Gaussian Blur once again, and now I want to set the radius to 250px, so pixels. However, there's a slight issue with this, uh, with the slider, and that is that this slider doesn't go any further than 100 pixels. Now, of course, there's a workaround, so how can we fix this? We can simply click in this little uh, input box, let's say, and we can change the value from 100 to 250, and once we press enter, you can see that we've applied our new uh, blur, let's say, so our new um, 250 pixels blur. Now, let's rename this to 250px for the 250 pixels blur. And now I want to create one more duplicate, so I'm going to press Command J once again. And this time I'm going to set the value all the way to 500 pixels. So let's type it in, 500 pixels, let's hit enter and let's cross it off. And now you can see we've got a pretty cool blur going on on our mushroom. Now, because we are using live filters, this is getting pretty heavy on our machine. So what I want to do now is I want to rasterize each and every single one of these layers. So let's first name this one 500px because this is our 500px layer. And now I'm going to right click the layer and I'm going to click rasterize. And this I'm going to do for every single uh, glow layer that we've just created. So let's rasterize this one. Let's click on the... 100px1 and rasterize it and on the 5px1 and rasterize it as well so now we've got this nice glow group so this is the before without any glow and this is what it looks like with the glow now the glow is pretty strong but of course we can tweak it by adjusting the uh, the opacity of each and every layer so we can go into our 5px layer and we can play with the opacity to see what's happening with our glow so actually i like it quite a lot but it's maybe a little too strong so i'm going to set it to about 70 maybe 60 percent and let's see what we can do with the next one so this is zero i'm going to slide it up and i think i will keep it at about maybe 65 percent Let's see what we can do with the next one. So this is without any glow. This is with all the glow. This actually looks pretty good. And I think the 500 one also looks pretty fine. So I'm gonna keep it like it is. So I've set the first one to 60 uh, opacity. Then I've set the 100px one to 65% opacity. And the other ones are set to 100% opacity. Now, the next thing that, that I want to do is I want to change the color of the glow. And since we've put everything in one group, this is quite easy actually to do. So now we only have to put an adjustment layer inside of our group and the color of our glow will be changed. So let's go into our adjustment layers and usually I would select an HSL layer or in Photoshop I would select an HSL layer but Affinity Photo has got its own adjustment layer for this case and that is the recolor layer. So let's click on recolor to create a recolor adjustment layer and now you can see that we can actually change the color of this glow um, to any color that we like. So usually I would go for something like light blue because I don't know I just love this color somehow for glows. So let's go for something like so. Now we can of course tweak the saturation, we can tweak the lightness as well in this um, recolor dialog box let's say. So if we play around with it a little bit we can maybe desaturate it a little bit but 
actually when something is glowing i like that it's very saturated so maybe i'm going to decrease it just a little bit to let's say 93 percent and let's see what we can do with the lightness and i think i'm just going to leave it like it was now this is a quick tip if you change this slider to whatever and you want to set it back to its original value the hardest way is to actually go and click and slide it back to zero percent the easy way is to simply double click on the handle and it will snap back to its original precision so let me double click on this lightness thing and you can see that it will snap back to zero percent all right so that was just a quick tip in between now let's cross this off because I really like the color already and of course if we want to change it we can always go back into the adjustment layer and change it however we like. Now I think we're done for the glow part of this mushroom but now of course since the top part of our mushroom is glowing usually the bottom part would also be a little brighter than the actual uh, color like it is right now. So now it's simply the normal color. I also want to add some blue to it. So Let's open our group once again actually and let's press command J to duplicate our recolor adjustment layer and let's clip it to our mushroom layer. So now you can see also the bottom part of the mushroom has changed color. Now I want to tweak it a little bit because I'm not super satisfied with the color and the saturation of this one. So I think I'm gonna add a little more saturation like so. And now I also want to add a curves adjustment layer to tweak the tones a little bit. So we can actually play with the tones with the highlights and with the midtones and the shadows a little bit to give it the color or the, the, the tone that we actually like. So there are two ways to add a curves adjustment layer. We can simply go here to our adjustment layers and we can click on curves. However, I prefer to use keyboard shortcuts. So I press command M on the keyboard and you can see that my curves adjustment layer has been opened. Now I can just play around with it however I like. So I'm just gonna uh, decrease the shadows a little bit and maybe increase the highlights a little bit, something like so maybe. Maybe increase the overall highlights a little bit. So something like this maybe and this is basically just playing around to see if we can find something that we like now let's see if this looks any good i think this looks pretty okay and maybe we should just keep it like it is right now so i'm gonna cross this off and this looks pretty okay to me however i think the bottom uh, the top part of our um I'm not really sure what it's called, but of this vertical part of the mushroom should be a little bit brighter as well. So I'm just going to add another adju uh, curves adjustment layer and I'm going to increase the brightness and I'm only going to focus on the top part of the mushroom. I'm going to increase the brightness like something like maybe like so. I'm going to cross it off and I'm going to use my inbuilt mask to um, only apply to the top of the mushroom, let's say. So I'm going to press command I to invert my layer mask and I can zoom in a little bit. I'm going to press B on the keyboard to select my brush tool. So let's press B. And now when I brush in with a white color, you can actually see that I can paint back the effect. So I only want the effect to be on the top part of our mushroom and maybe I'm gonna decrease the opacity a little bit to 36% or so. And now you can see that we can only apply to the top part of our mushroom. So this looks very very good to me actually. It looks very natural. Uh, but of course we are not done yet because if the mushroom is glowing of course the uh, overall surroundings around the mushroom would also be more bluish. Now we can actually see that it's still green, it's still the normal color, but I want to add some glow to the uh, surroundings as well. All right, so how to do this, and there's a really cool trick for, for this, and that is actually by using a fill layer. So let's click on our glow layer. This is the top layer of everything. And by the way, I forgot one thing. I want to add some, like, let's say a dark blue to the background so that it kind of looks like a night sky because this picture was taken early morning and I want to make it look more like it was like, let's say at dusk or something. So let's um, click on our glow layer and let's go to our adjustment layers and let's add a lens filter. And I want to change this lens filter color to something really blue. So let's say some nice dark blue, something like 
this I think would look fine and now I'm just gonna increase the optical density I have to say and I want to uh, uncheck preserve luminosity because I want to uh, make it look like it's very very dark now you can see obviously that the whole picture is affected and I don't want this mushroom to be affected so how to do this I simply clip it to our background layer so that only our background layer will be affected so this is the before that it was pretty bright actually and this is what the after looks like now of course I can make it even darker so something like this looks pretty cool to me and this looks pretty cool already all right, so the next step, what I just told you is I want to create some atmospheric light because of course, when the mushroom is glowing, the surroundings should also be brighter than or, or lit up a little bit by the color of the mushroom. So how to do this? Let's add a fill layer and we're gonna fill it with some nice turquoise slash cyan color. So let's go up here to our menu. Let's click on layer and let's click on new fill layer. Now. The, by, by default the color is set to white but I want to set it to some nice uh, cyan color so I'm gonna press B on the keyboard to um, to sample this cyan color from the mushroom so I'm holding alt or option on the keyboard right now and I click to sample a new color actually and I'm gonna look for a nice bright blue so something like this and yeah this looks pretty good to me actually so let's go to our fill layer let's select our blue color and let's click right over here to select it and now you can see our whole screen is filled with blue and as you can see I've opened my color panel so I can actually tweak it a little bit because I think it's a little too um, too bright so let me add some saturation like so I think this looks pretty good and maybe make it a little darker something like this looks pretty good to me and um, this is the first step all right so the second step what I want to do and usually we think about playing with the blend modes or something so if I would play with the blend modes you can see that it already starts to look pretty okay but it doesn't really look like it is actually um, shining or it is actually glowing and even with the glow uh, blend mode it doesn't really look like it's glowing so what I want to do is I want to you go into my blend ranges actually and I'm gonna tweak these blend ranges a little bit now I want to focus on the right side of our blend ranges and that is the underlying composition ranges so I want to make sure that there's no uh, blue in the shadows let's say but that there is some blue on the brighter areas of our background so I'm gonna drag this left note all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna drag this top right one all the way to the left or not all the way but more to the left and I'm simply want I simply want to look at how this looks right over here so now you can see that instead of what it actually looked and it looked like this now we can actually see the shadows through so that we can see the shadows of the background but all the brighter areas of the background are let's say blue so let's tweak this a little further so that we can actually make it look like a nice glow and we can also make it linear and we can just tweak it a little bit we can add some extra notes so maybe something like this, maybe drag this one up a little bit and this looks pretty good to me. So let's cross it off for now. And of course, I don't want this to be applied to the whole background. I only want this to be applied to a certain area of the background. So I'm going to create a black mask and I'm going to paint back the effect. So how to do this, how to create a black mask, simply hold the alt or option key on the keyboard and click on the mask icon with the fill layer selected so once I click the mask icon right now you can see that we've created a black layer mask and that our fill layer is invisible now when I brush in with my brush tool with a white color I can paint back the effect however I've got my color now set to some turquoise and some darker cyan color so how to set it to default mode simply press D on the keyboard which is the keyboard shortcut for default color so let's press D on the keyboard and now you can see that uh, the color snapped back to black and white. Now, of course, I need my white color. So instead of uh, having black as a foreground color, I can toggle between the black and the foreground color by pressing X on the keyboard. So now I've got my white color set 
and I want to set my opacity to maybe, yeah, 36 is actually pretty fine. And now we're simply gonna brush in some areas that I want to be lit up. So I think something around here should be very bright and then slowly it should get less bright to the outside. So something like, so this is way too strong actually I see. So I'm gonna brush in with black again to hide some parts of the glow. And I think this looks pretty decent. Maybe add something right here and some right here. And if I zoom out right now, you can see that we've created this really, really nice glow. Now, of course, we're not done yet because we can improve it even more than this. But let me first show you the before and after. So this is actually the before. So before we added this atmospheric um, glow, let's say to the surroundings, and this is the after. So it already looks a lot, a lot, a lot better. Now we can tweak this as we need. So we can always just go to our fill layer, which I'm actually gonna call glow surrounding. And we can always go back into our blend ranges or to change the color or whatever. And we can of course also change the color of our mesh mushroom if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it like it is for now because I really like this bluish color. Now, how can we improve this picture even more? And that is by adding some particles or some, some sparkles to the mushroom so that it actually looks more like this fairy tale scene, you know? So how to do this? We're gonna create a new layer on top of everything, a new pixel layer, and I'm gonna use brushes for this. So I will go to my brushes and I'm gonna find my star brushes, which is right over here. I'm gonna select it. And as you can see, this is my star brush. This is what it looks like. And I simply want to click once. So maybe I want to select some nice bluish color. So I'm gonna hold my Alt key and I'm gonna, or my Option key in my case, and I'm gonna select some bright blue. So something like this. I'm gonna zoom out once again and I'm gonna click once. And there I have my particles. Now I don't want to, the particles to be like this. So I'm gonna position them how I want. So maybe I want to turn it around and maybe I want to um, shrink it a little bit and do something like this. This looks pretty good to me. So it actually looks like there are some sparkles dropping from the bottom of the mushroom. And this already looks pretty good, but of course I want to mask out some parts because these ones we don't really need. So let's go into our sparkles or our stars layer let's say let's call it sparkles for now because i have no idea what they are called i'm gonna create a layer mask by pressing this icon of course and i'm gonna select my soft round brush and with black as a foreground color i can now hide parts of our sparkles that we don't need so something like so and this actually looks really really good to me now we can do even more we can add a, an effect to our sparkle so we can actually add an outer glow to the sparkle so that they glow a little bit more than they actually do right now so let's select our sparkles layer let's go to the effects panel and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing and let's select the outer glow so let's tick it let's let's check mark it or whatever and let's increase no first we're gonna set the color to some nice blue so i'm simply gonna click and drag our color thingy color picker right over there and then i have to click it once again to select the color and now i will add increase the radius so let's see to where i can add the radius and maybe first increase the intensity so this is what it looks like oops this is what it looks like with full intensity, then with full radius, it starts to look really, really messy. But now I can actually see what we're doing. So now it looks really ridiculous. But if I decrease the intensity slowly, you can see that we get these nice, let's say, kind of faded out, groom, gloomy sparkles. So of course, we can also play with the um, opacity of our outer glow so you can see this is full opaque this is not opaque at all so there's no outer glow so let's go somewhere in between let's say 66 percent for now and let's close this off so this is what it looks like and actually i want to mask out some sparkles right over here because i think they're a little bit too many so let's select black as a foreground color let's zoom out a little bit 
and let's just brush out some sparkles that we're not gonna need in this case so maybe with a super opaque brush or transparent brush we can brush it out a little bit just like how we how we like it and i think this looks pretty pretty amazing now of course there are more things that we can do we can also add sparkles to the foreground and it's always a great idea to add some foreground elements because it gives more depth to the picture so let's do that as a last thing i'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and i'm gonna call this foreground sparkles And I'm gonna go to my brushes and I'm actually gonna choose one of my particle brushes and let's see what we've got right over here. This looks pretty okay. What is this one right over here? Maybe this looks pretty good as well. So I'm gonna maybe click once. Let's see. Maybe increase the brush size a little bit and click once. And wow, this actually looks even better than it already looked before. This is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after all right first of all thank you so much for watching all the way through and second of all i've got an amazing something to tell you now since you've watched this tutorial all the way through what not many people actually do i'm pretty pretty convinced that you love photo manipulation just as much as i do now as you might know i've been working the past weeks even months to create an amazing surreal photo manipulation course called the art of photo manipulation now the course isn't fully finished yet but there's tons and tons and tons of value already in the course so i want to give the nine people to enroll first into the art of photo manipulation course a 50 dollar discount now i'm gonna put the coupon code anywhere here on the screen follow the link go to this course check out the sales page check out the video that i've created check out the full course curriculum and if you're interested in this and you would love to learn more then just go to the checkout page paste in this code and see if you're one of the lucky nine to enroll into the art of photo manipulation with a $50 discount. All right, thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I really, I really appreciate you and I hope to see you in the art of photo manipulation. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you love my content, feel very free to subscribe to my channel. And then I hope to see you in the art of photo manipulation and in my next video. Peace.